deserts, the driest places on Earth, covering more than a fifth of all the world's landmass, as dangerous to life as the highest peak or the coldest glacier. But in these harsh and barren wastelands, nature endures. The people have lived in the desert since the beginning of time. Resilient and resourceful, they have developed unique cultures and deep spiritual bonds with these arid lands. But the modern world of commerce and industry is encroaching on the desert, claiming its resources, changing the delicate balance of life. Now, more than ever, desert people must adapt to survive. This series tells their story of struggle and endeavor, of humanity's continuing relationship with the most challenging places on Earth. There's just one word that's needed to describe the Atacama. Dry. Parts of the desert are completely arid, virtually sterile. Not even bacteria survive. The Atacama stretches for a thousand kilometers along the shores of Chile and Peru. Coastal mountains to the west and the giant Andes to the east block out the rain clouds. In some places, it hasn't rained for four centuries. And yet, miraculously, people have found ways to live here. The human face of the Atacama expresses joy as well as a simple determination to survive. But there's a darker side to this desert story. The Atacama is so dry it preserves, like nowhere else, the dirty secrets of its ancient past. And there's no hiding place here for the evidence of much more recent terrors. Today, water has become a precious, private commodity. Mining corporations buy it up. Residents go thirsty. Yet these barren, moistureless plains may give us our best chance of finding water and life billions of miles away. A place awash with contradictions. This is the Atacama, the driest desert. giant shadow of the Andes is where the high desert and the story of human survival begins. <laughs> Benita Panera is a survivor. For 60 years, she's farmed an isolated patch of land in these mountains. Three thousand meters above sea level, life for Benita is a daily battle with the elements. En el invierno pasa mucho viento, mucha tierra, que hace mucho frío y uno no sé. Ahí es un poco difícil. Benita's animals are her lifeline, providing milk and meat and something to trade. She has no electricity and no running water. She used to walk several kilometers to draw supplies from a mountain spring. But these days, the journey is too much for her. She's forced to depend on the generosity of neighbors. Even so, she has to eke out every last drop. 
Vienen toda la semana y me dejan agua. Dura como una semana, dos semanas, o más de 15 días, 20 días, según la cantidad que uso. Benita's most dependable helper is her nephew, René. René feels a family responsibility to lend a hand as Benita's only close relative. As it happens, it's also a civic duty for him. He's the head man of the nearest village, Aikina. Life there can also be a struggle. There are many things that we're concerned about. What we saw, for example, in the quality of life that our people have here. We're in the 21st century. Y todavía podemos ver, digamos, donde nuestra gente vive tal cual como un poco como la prehistoria, sin tener agua potable, digamos, mediante cañería, sin tener alcantarillado, sin más bien usando a campo libre. Sprawling across the hillside, Aikina looks for all the world like a substantial settlement. In fact, its permanent population is no more than 70. Most of these buildings are holiday homes. For much of the year, they lie empty until it's party time. At the height of festive season during the first week of September, the town's population swells to 75,000. Catholicism takes center stage. But religion here is enriched with customs that were already sacred when Christianity arrived with the Spanish conquistadors. The villagers are descendants of the Aymara, indigenous people who have farmed in the shadow of the Andes for more than 2,000 years. The costumes, the music, the dances all date back to an era before Europeans ever set foot here. So too does the secret of how the Aymara managed to establish themselves here. Eight kilometers east of the village lie the ancient ruins of Topain. The evidence here is of an Aymaran village that's more than a thousand years old. In those days, the desert was even drier than it is today. Yet archaeologists like Cesar Pacero are finding increasing proof that even through the super drought, the population here not only survived, it thrived. Los habitantes de Topaí, un grupo de unas pocas familias, fue capaz de aprovechar de forma super eficiente y muy eficaz la muy escasa agua que había en este lugar. The keys to success were these rock channels the arteries of a sophisticated water distribution system. The irrigation watered these specially built terraces, nourishing all the crops the Aymara needed. But with no rainfall, where did the water come from? The answer is in the very Andean peaks that block the rain clouds from reaching the desert. The summits catch what little precipitation there is, and redirected to glacial springs and underground rivers. The Aymara were able to pinpoint these hidden sources. By building simple dams, they could even store water for when the streams ran dry. A thousand years later, the precious knowledge has not been entirely lost. slopes beneath Aikina, there's a hidden oasis. Terraces of vegetation are irrigated by water channeled from a mountain spring using techniques pioneered a millennium ago. And the valley below shows what's possible when you husband scarce resources with skill and ingenuity.
there's plenty to give thanks for. But even at party time, René can't be entirely free of worry. His family has lived in Aikina as far back as their memory goes. But there's a big change on the horizon. A change that René fears could rob his children of a future here. A few kilometers to the west, there are more ruins. The remains of a village that once thrived like Aikina. René is keen for his son to understand what happened here. Esto, antiguamente, todo esto lo que tú ves acá, este era 